What's good, y'all? Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about my transition out of my nine to five corporate job and my transition into being a full-time independent business owner slash content creator. I feel like it's interesting because now that I've lived both for a little bit, I feel like they both definitely come with their unique set of pros and cons. To give some background, I was a tech consultant for four years at a big consulting firm, and I recently just quit. Well, by recently, I mean like three months ago, but I've been kind of keeping that on the low. But yeah, I recently quit my nine to five, and I wanted to share a little bit about the pros and cons of corporate versus independent. Let's go. Also, everything that I'm speaking about is gonna be based on my experience, so take it with a grain of salt, and everything that I say is pretty situational, and maybe it applies to you too. So let's start with the pros and cons of corporate life. Obviously, the biggest pro that everybody knows is stability. It's kind of nice knowing when your next paycheck's gonna come, how much it's gonna be, and the fact that you only see your post-tax amount is good for budgeting. Not only the stability when it comes to paychecks, but also just the stability in terms of your career, knowing your next title and your next promotion, and I feel like you kind of just have to keep going on that ladder until you're at the top. Another pro of corporate life that also goes hand in hand with stability is benefits. Not only do you get your salary, but you can get bonuses, you can get PTO, you can get stock options, you have good health care. I feel like the list goes on in terms of benefits of what you actually get in corporate. It's kind of nice to be taken care of. Another pro of corporate life is coworkers. I feel like having coworkers is a blessing. Not only just peers that you work with, but also mentors that you look up to. I feel like just having a community of diverse but like-minded people can create a lot of inspiration for people. Not to mention that your coworkers can also become your friends. I feel like the community you get in corporate is definitely not something to be taken for granted. All in all, corporate has a lot of pros. There's even days now where I kind of miss it. But now let's get into the cons of corporate. And I think for you guys watching, this is pretty emphasized on social media. First con being strict hours. Not only that, but extended hours. You could literally be working from like seven to 10 p.m. some days, especially as a tech consultant. In a job where you're working so many hours, I just feel like it's so hard to get other things done in your life. At some point when your hours are so heavy, work just becomes the only thing that you think about. The second con is being stuck on a bad team. Sometimes you're gonna become friends with your coworkers and sometimes you're gonna hate working with them. Work is something that you invest 40 plus hours a week on. So when you're stuck on a bad team or you just don't like the people that you're surrounded by or the environment that you're in, man, that shit sucks. And then lastly in corporate, I feel like work can get pretty monotonous. I guess that's the whole point is specializing in a specific role that you do and you specialize in and you're really good at it. And that's what makes companies really efficient is everybody's really good at what they do and they just continue to do that for their company. But because of that, I feel like work can get pretty monotonous. Even if you're doing it for different clients, the work you're doing is gonna be pretty similar. I don't know, I always felt like my work was always kind of monotonous. But all in all, corporate's a great option. I really don't think it should be something that's looked down upon, especially how it's emphasized on social media that you gotta get out of your nine to five, you gotta break out of that. I feel like that's not necessarily true. You know, some people enjoy it and I think that's perfectly fine. But now let's get into the pros and cons of being a full-time independent, business owner, entrepreneur, whatever you wanna call it. First, let's start with the pros. I guess this is a good time for me to reflect and appreciate all the good things about the position that I'm in right now. I definitely am happy with the lifestyle I'm able to live and this video kind of forces me to reflect on that a little bit. So the pros of this. I guess the first and most obvious pro is that I'm my own boss now. I kind of get to choose my own hours and I get to work when I want to work. So it's kind of nice being able to change my daily schedule based on what I need to get done that day. But one thing I've started doing recently is reclaiming my mornings. So every morning, I'll take it slow, I'll make my breakfast, I'll train, I'll get a walk outside. And I've been starting my day off with a lot of gratitude recently because of that. It's definitely been helping my mental and my physical. I think the second pro is the higher ceiling there is. I feel like finally there's this direct correlation with how much and how hard you work to how much you're making. In corporate, I feel like I was so disincentivized to work harder and I hated that. I was just incentivized to get by without getting fired, right? Sure, if you work hard for a whole year, you can get a bigger bonus or a bigger raise, maybe an early promotion, but in my eyes, it never seemed that worth it. It felt like the longer I worked and the harder I worked, the lower my hourly was. That's kind of how I felt. So I always felt like there was this discrepancy of how hard I worked versus how much I made and, and I should be trying to work the bare minimum in order to make my salary. Not to say I was a bad worker, I think I was a pretty good worker, but I just didn't like that discrepancy in corporate. Now I feel like the harder I work, the more I put in, the more I'll get out. The cool thing now about owning my own business is I feel like sky's the limit. I feel like right now I'm doing all right, but I have hopes of scaling and 
growing my business without sacrificing the quality of the service that I've built and provided. And I feel like that's a fun problem to solve. 2Xing, 3Xing, 4Xing my revenue now doesn't seem impossible. It's definitely a cool, challenging problem to solve and I think that's the fun of it. And finally, I think the last pro of being full-time independent is just I feel more passionate about it. I feel more fulfilled at the end of the day. I feel like I'm making genuine connections, genuine friendships. At the end of the day, I just like what I'm doing better now, which is great. So now some of the cons of being a full-time independent. First and foremost, to be honest, I think I work longer hours now. And you'll hear everybody say it. It's hard to have work-life balance when your work and your life aren't separated. As an entrepreneur, it's easy to be consumed by work because your work and your business soon becomes your identity. So sometimes having that work-life balance is kind of challenging. And to be honest, I would say I'm working just as many, if not more hours now than I was at my corporate job. The second thing is anxiety and stress. Man, I'm telling you, I don't think I've experienced the amount of anxiety and stress I have within the past three months of being independent. I think it's so easy to think of the worst case scenario of your business failing. And how much is my next paycheck gonna be? What if I can't do this all on my own? And to be honest, that instability is quite stressful at times. I think in the last three months, it's gotten better, but I think it's an inevitable part of the process. I think I'm learning that when stress and anxiety do come and when I'm feeling those negative emotions, like how am I gonna deal with it? Am I gonna react to it in a negative way where I'm pulling out my hair or in a more positive way? I think it's that stress and that anxiety that's gotten me to where I am and that will continue to push me further. So in a way, stress can be viewed as a good thing, but it definitely is is a new feeling and I feel like it's inevitable when you start a new business, when you start something new, that anxiety and stress will come. So figuring out ways to deal with that has been interesting to say the least. The third and last con of being a full-time independent is it's kind of lonely. Like literally everything I do, like filming, editing, making programs, all of that stuff I do alone. I don't have coworkers, I don't have a boss, I don't really have many mentors, so it gets kind of lonely at times. But in addition to that, I feel like less people understand what I do. I feel like in corporate, everybody's kind of in the same path, going through the same motions, trying to get that same promotion, right? They understand each other and they understand each other's struggles. But I feel like as an independent, it's harder to find that community of people that are going through the similar struggles as me. It's probably out there somewhere and maybe I just have to go out and find it. And I don't mean to say all this because I want sympathy or any of that. Really, I just wanted to humanize the experience a little bit and talk a little bit about my experience from corporate to being an independent. I don't think that it's all the glitz and glamour that you see online. I don't think that the grass is always greener on the other side. I think everything comes with their own unique sets of pros and cons and I just wanted to shed light on it a little bit. With all that being said, I'm super grateful in the position I'm in, truly. Like, I love what I do, but the fact that I can do this, film this on a Wednesday in the afternoon, chilling, oh fuck, but I have to edit it tomorrow. <laughs> See, comes with the own pros and cons. I truly am grateful and appreciative of where I'm at. I love what I do, and the fact that I get to do this is a blessing. The fact that I even got to experience what it's like on both sides is a blessing. Maybe some of you are watching are thinking, damn, like, I really wanna do that too. This next segment is for you. I'm gonna give you some tips and advice that I learned throughout my journey that I wish I knew sooner. But my first tip is make sure that it's something that you actually want. Just make sure it's something that you're passionate about or make sure that it's something that you actually want. Because at the end of the day, if you're not passionate about it, you're most likely not gonna succeed in it. Like I think it's easy to glamorize someone else's life because they're making more money or you see all the good things that they're posting online. But trust me, if you switch lives with them and you actually have to do their day to day, maybe you wouldn't like it so much. So just make sure that it's something that you actually enjoy and that you're actually passionate about. Second piece of advice is put in the work. Honestly, in the beginning of something new, it's always gonna be a grind. I feel like the beginning or the start of something is probably when you're gonna be the least efficient at it. For example, take editing a video. When you're filming a video, editing it, that could take up to like five hours the first time you do it just because you don't really know what you're doing, you have to figure it all out. But as you learn, as you start learning how to film, how to edit, what shots you might need, templates you might build, I feel like everything just becomes more efficient over time. But to put it bluntly, it's gonna be a lot of work. No matter what you do to make it successful, it's gonna be a lot of work because if it wasn't, everybody would be doing it. My third piece of advice is don't jump ship. I think people tend to have this all or nothing approach on things, so they think that they have to quit their job in order to pursue their passion. But I feel like both of those aren't mutually exclusive. Like in my scenario, I wanted to make sure that I learned how to swim before I jumped ship. I think it's better to work on both of them simultaneously and tangentially. And then once you start making enough to replace or at least supplement your income, then maybe you can quit your nine to five. What that means though, is that you'll be working two jobs at once 
friends for a little bit. It could be half a year, it could be multiple years. At the end of the day, it's really tough, but if you want it bad enough, you'll make it happen. And then my fourth and final piece of advice is don't overthink it. Like, just start. If it doesn't work out, so be it. If you take that first step, trust me, it'll lead to the second step, and then it'll lead to your third step, and your fourth step, and your fifth step. You do that shit for 12 months, you'll look back on yourself and be like, damn, I did a lot in 12 months. <laughs> I feel like the longer that you don't start, the more time you give yourself an excuse not to start. So might as well just take step one tomorrow. But there you have it. That's my piece of advice if you were looking to transition into a full-time independent job. Obviously take it with a grain of salt. Again, this is just my own experience and I kind of wanted to just shed light and talk about it for a little bit. But I'm hoping that's helped some of you guys and just shed some light on both the pros and cons of both corporate and independent. And again, both very solid options. So don't glamorize or look down on one another. I feel like just do what makes you feel fulfilled, what makes you happy, and at the end of the day, what you wanna do. What's good, y'all? As always, if you made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you guys so much. If you could like, comment, subscribe, share, do whatever you can to support me and whatever, click the link in the description, all that stuff, that would be greatly appreciated. But on the real though, I know this wasn't a typical vlog style video, but I do think that this was kind of an important topic, or at least for me it was. So, so I just wanted to share it with you guys and hopefully you guys resonate with it a little bit. And if you don't, hopefully you found it somewhat entertaining. Next week's video, stay tuned. We're gonna go back to vlog style. I'm gonna give you guys a tour of my apartment and I'm gonna be joining a run club next week. So stay tuned, it's gonna be exciting. I got big stuff planned. I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are too. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.